Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today I've got a, a video for you that I really had no idea how I was going to tackle this one, but I was intrigued enough to take a look at the new Power Color 6900XT Liquid Devil Ultimate that I had to come up with something. But I suppose first we should rewind a bit. So many months ago now, MSI sent me their RTX 3090 Supreme X. I'm going to say Supreme. I think it's meant to be Supreme, but it, it's spelt Supreme. Anyway, I agreed to taking a look at this thing because they told me it was going to be the biggest and baddest RTX 3090 on the market. Essentially an unleashed RTX 3090 designed to deliver maximum performance. So I thought that sounds pretty good. I'll take a look. In the end though, Gigabyte just beat them to the punch by sending over their Aorus Extreme version of the RTX 3090, which I have looked at and concluded that it's kind of dumb. Essentially, it was just 1-2% faster than the gaming OC version, while making a lot more noise due to the increased power use. Unfortunately, the MSI Supreme X was really no different, and with little interest from you guys on the Aorus Extreme video, I just decided to skip MSI's version. Then just a few weeks ago, PowerColor requested that I take a look at their new 1600 XT Liquid Devil Ultimate, a fully unlocked 1600 XT with maximum tuning potential, thanks to the inclusion of an EK water block, along with bin silicon and then no OC limits in the Wattman tool. And that sounded pretty interesting to me, just how fast is AMD's best silicon without any artificial limits? And since I still had the MSI RTX 3090 Supreme X on hand, I thought it might be interesting to pit one of the absolute fastest RTX 3090 graphics cards against what is surely going to be one of the absolute fastest 6900 XT graphics cards. So that's what we're going to do. Before we get into it though, be aware that this isn't your typical AIB graphics card review from us. So I'm not going to tear the Liquid Devil Ultimate down and stick K-type thermocouples all over it. Really, all I want to do with this video is see how these two extreme graphics cards compare in half a dozen games, both in their out-of-the-box configuration, as well as a maximum overclocked configuration. So this is going to be nothing like our regular content that looks at AIB graphics cards. I'm also not that interested in comparing thermals, as one is a massive air-cooled graphics card, while the other is a fairly compact liquid-cooled card. For a better direct comparison, I'd use something like the Aorus RTX 3090 Extreme Water Force, but I'm not really keen on testing any more outrageously overpriced graphics cards to make my point. A point that we'll get to later on in the video. Now for those of you wondering, the MSI RTX 3090 Supreme X cost $2,250 US, while the PowerColor 6900XT Liquid Devil Ultimate costs, and wait for it, two and a half thousand dollars US. And that's what an RTX 3090 plus a 6900 XT are meant to cost. So in other words, both are just the pinnacle of value for PC gaming, just incredible in terms of cost per frame. Now, before we get into the blue bar graphs, a few quick notes on the test conditions. All testing was conducted using the Ryzen 9 5950X with 32 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 CL14 dual rank dual channel memory. The PowerColor 6900XT Liquid Devil Ultimate was tested exclusively using the Unleash 332W BIOS, and that saw it operate at 2480MHz on average, while the memory remained stock at 16 gigabits per second. Again, temperatures aren't the focus here, but for those wondering, it did peak at 79 degrees using a Corsair 360mm radiator. Overclocked, it managed 2780 megahertz, while the memory only went to 17.6 gigabits per second. Going higher didn't appear to risk stability, it just tanked performance. And under these conditions, the hotspot temperature reached 87 degrees. So when all's said and done, that's roughly a 22% frequency increase over the stock AMD reference 6900 XT. Now the MSI RTX 3090 Supreme X, it ran at 1875MHz out of the box, with the memory at 19.5 gigabits per second, and that resulted in a GPU temperature of 71 degrees. AMD and Nvidia report temperatures differently, so those figures aren't in any way comparable, and that's in spite of the fact that the cards are cooled using very different methods. Overclocked, the Supreme X averaged a core frequency of 2025MHz while the memory reached 21 gigabits per second. Under these conditions, the temperature hit 82 degrees with a fan speed of 2200 RPM. All up, we're looking at a mere 11% increase in frequency over the stock Founders Edition model, which is super disappointing, I've got to be honest. Anyway, with all of that said, let's jump into the results. Here we see that Nvidia's Ampere architecture hits a brick wall pretty early on in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, limiting performance of the fastest RTX 3090 graphics card to just shy of 90 FPS, and as a result my manual overclock wasn't of benefit here. 
boosting performance over the stock 3090 by just 2% and 13% over a stock 3080. The Liquid Devil did do a little bit better using the Unleash bar, so it was 4% faster than AMD's reference design at 6900 XT, and my manual overclock extended that lead out to 9%. Not exactly earth shattering stuff, is it? Moving to 4K, we do see that the manually overclocked Supreme X pulled a little ahead of the stock 3090, though we're only talking about a mere 5% increase here. The Liquid Devil was just 7% faster than the stock 1600 XT when using the Unleash Bars, and my manual overclock increased that margin to 16%, which by today's GPU overclocking standards is pretty good. It also meant that in this title, the Max OC 1600 XT was 23% faster than the Max OC RTX 3090, though do keep in mind that this is an AMD sponsored title. Moving on to Hitman 2, and again, we see the 1600 XT makes out very well at 1440p, pushing up over 170 FPS, though interestingly, overclocking with the Liquid Devil didn't help to further performance. It was a similar situation with the RTX 3090, despite being slower out of the gate. The RTX 3090 comes back at 4K, though our Max OC only improved frame rates by 5%. That means the Liquid Devil was faster and the manual overclocked boosted performance by a further 8%, making it 9% faster than the Max OC on the RTX 3090. So again, AMD wins here due to the higher overclock of the Power Color graphics card. Next up we have Horizon Zero Dawn, and here at 1440p the data is pretty competitive. Stock the RTX 3090 and 1600 XT both averaged 145 FPS, while the Supreme X and Liquid Devil only boosted performance by 1 to 3%. Again, it was the superior overclock of the Power Color Liquid Devil that gave the Radeon GPU the edge, but even so, here it was only 8% faster than the stock AMD reference model. However, jumping up to 4K does hand Nvidia the win, and here the Supreme X performed very well, hitting 94 FPS to make it 9% faster than the stock model, and 11% faster than the Liquid Devil. When testing with Rainbow Six Siege at 1440p, we again find that 1600 XT is able to match the RTX 3090 when both are stock. The factory overclocked Supreme X and Liquid Devil compete well, but ultimately the higher overclock on the Power Color graphics card puts it ahead and then well ahead once both are overclocked manually to the max. This saw it win by a 10% margin. However, once again the 1600 XT tumbles down the order at 4K, and now the Supreme X reigns supreme with the Max OC configuration delivering 15% greater performance. In fact, even when manually overclocked, the Liquid Devil couldn't even match the stock Founders Edition RTX 3090. The second last game we're going to look at is Shut Off the Tomb Raider, and here we see that the stock RTX 3090 is a mere 2% faster than the 1600 XT at 1440p. However, the Liquid Devil was 4% faster than the Supreme X, and with both overclocked to the max, the Power Color graphics card came out ahead by a 6% margin. Yet despite that, we see a complete reversal of the margins at 4K. Here it's the Supreme X that's 6% faster, though it is worth noting that stock the RTX 3090 is 11% faster than the 1600 XT. And last up we have Watch Dogs Legion, and again it's the Liquid Devil that comes out on top with the Max OC configuration delivering 6% more performance at 1440p. But then once again at 4K the RTX 3090 takes over, and even when overclocked to the max, the Liquid Devil can't catch the Supreme X, trailing by a 4% margin. Okay, so we've now seen the performance. The manually overclocked Supreme X was up to 13% faster than the Founders Edition version, though it was typically around 8% faster. Meanwhile, the Liquid Devil was up to 16% faster than the AMD reference model, and typically around 10% faster. Now, in order to achieve those gains, total system consumption increased by 18% with the Liquid Devil, so 90 watts, and 23% for the Supreme X, and that's a 123 watt increase. In the case of the MSI card, that meant higher temperatures and louder operation than most RTX 3090s, in particular MSI's own Gaming X Trio, which can deliver virtually the same level of performance while making less noise, as it doesn't consume anywhere near the same level of power. Then for the Power Color Liquid Devil, the trade-offs aren't as noticeable as it is a liquid cool graphics card, but even so, for a liquid cool graphics card, temperatures were still quite high and in reality isn't that much faster than the typical 1600 XT, and we'll look at that in a moment. Before we do though, I should note that the coil whine is quite extreme on the Liquid Devil, especially when pumping out those high frame rates at 1440p. Coil whine's also an issue for the RTX 3090 Founders Edition, but I found it even worse with the Liquid Devil. So while the liquid cooling is typically quieter, this is in my opinion not a very quiet graphics card. 
Wrapping up the testing, I thought I'd overclock the AMD reference model as well as the NVIDIA Founders Edition version and see how they compare to the power hungry power color and MSI versions. Starting with the Radeon results, we see that the AMD reference card was able to boost performance by just 5% when overclocked to the max. And while that's pretty weak, it did mean that the extreme liquid cooled version from power color was now just 5% faster. And that's also pretty weak. But the MSI Supreme X was even weaker. The found position model overclocked to almost the same frequency, resulting in a 6% performance boost, and that meant the Supreme X was just 1.5% faster. Just 1.5% faster. So what exactly is the point of that? Again, it's hotter, louder, and more expensive than the Gaming X Trio model, but no faster. In short, you're looking at up to 5% more performance from these unleashed uber expensive 6900 XT and RTX 3090 graphics cards, and assuming you can buy either of them, they're also significantly more expensive. Of course, right now pricing is completely messed up for both AMD and NVIDIA graphics cards, so kind of doesn't really matter. For example, the RTX 3090s are meant to be starting at $1,500 US if I recall correctly, but the MSI Ventus X3 version, which is meant to be the base model, that starts at $1,950 US. The Gaming X Trio, which I reviewed a while back, that's $2,250 US, and then the new Supreme X version is slightly more expensive again. The 6900 XT is a better example as the AMD reference cards are still listed for $1,000 US with AIB models starting around $1,400 US. And then we have the Liquid Devil at $2,500 US. While it is nice that this model has no overclocking limits, other than the silicon itself, you can buy 6900 XT water blocks for around $150 US. So assuming that you could purchase a base model 6900 XT for $1,000, pairing that with a water block of your choosing would be the way to go. Yeah, the Liquid Devil is binned silicon and you don't have to void the warranty and all that, but is it really worth paying more than twice as much for? So in short, these premium models are dumb, at least in my opinion. The MSI RTX 3090 Supreme X is dumb because it runs hotter and louder than the model below it while offering no extra performance. And for whatever reason, you can't wind it down to match the Gaming X Trio. The clocks just fall away, and as a consequence, so does performance. Oddly, this was something MSI themselves couldn't address for us either. And that means you can't even take advantage of the larger cooler to enjoy stock RTX 3090 light performance with almost silent operation. Admittedly, the power color 6900 XT Liquid Devil, it's not as dumb, but it's still pretty silly even for PC enthusiasts. And that's largely due to the fact that it costs too much and you can achieve near enough to the same performance with an AMD reference card. And that's without a water block. You could add your own water block. It'd possibly improve overclocking a bit. It would certainly reduce the operating volume and that would be a much cheaper way of effectively achieving what the Liquid Devil does. Or alternatively, you could just get a good air-cooled model, like what you'll get with PowerColor's own Red Devil. Now, you might think that I'm missing the point of these premium graphics cards, as they're designed to be the fastest, and they're just that. But they're also kind of dumb. If being the fastest is your only requirement, and cost along with pretty much everything else be damned, well, you didn't need to come to us for a review, or whatever this content is. By merely looking at the paper spec, I can tell you that these will be the fastest, but when put to the test, they're really not that much faster, despite costing a shipload more. We're really well beyond the point of diminishing returns here, but then maybe that is the point. I'm not sure. After all, I've been very upfront in my disapproval of both the Radeon RX 1600 XT and GeForce RTX 3090, and yet AIBs keep begging me to review their products based on these GPUs. Neither makes an ounce of sense, again, assuming the RTX 3080 and 6800 XT can be A, purchased, and B, purchased near the advertised MSRP. Anyway, we could just go on and on, but there's not too much point taking this one any further. Both the PowerColor 6900 XT Liquid Devil Ultimate and MSI RTX 3090 Supreme X, they work. I just don't see a need for them to exist other than to make as much profit as possible off those seeking as much performance as possible, and of course the bragging rights that go along with it. And I'll end things there. So if you liked the video, do that thing, subscribe for more content, uh, probably quite different to this content. It is nice to mix it up every now and 
then and do slightly different stuff. But yeah, normally uh, graphics card reviews look quite different to this. So you can go back and look at some of those if you'd like to. Uh, also, if you'd like to, you can join the Harbour Unbox community. You can do so over at Floatplane or Patreon. That'll get you access to some pretty cool stuff like monthly live stream with two of myself that's coming up next week along with our Q&A series. There's a, a Patreon Q&A section. We also have an awesome Discord server, amazing PC focused community over there. And yeah, behind the scenes content, a lot of cool stuff there. So as I said, if you're interested, check it out, links from the video description. If not, perfectly fine. And I would like to just thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.